The Cincinnati Bengals, who were very upset at the league um, over coin toss gate. Um, actually, and, and I heard it even started before that because I heard that they thought that the game was actually going to be continued, that the game was going to be resumed at some point last week, but the Bills, the Bills were out of town quick. <laughs> they, they all left right away. Um, but they were heated over that, and then, of course, with the whole coin toss thing, and they showed their frustration with the whole possibility of the coin toss. It obviously didn't happen since they won a the game yesterday. Um, but, of course, Joe Mixon, after he got his touchdown, he saw him pull the coin out of his sock and flip it. I said, okay, I see you, Mixon. I, I like that one. Um, and then after the game, Eli Apple, he showed the, uh, the poster, Roger Goodell, and the coin. So the Bengals were letting it be known that they did not like what the league did in that situation. And they had reasons to be upset. Ravens also had reasons to be upset. And other teams had reasons to be upset. But, I mean, at this point, it is what it is. But it didn't stop there. It didn't stop there. I was scrolling through Twitter yesterday. And I ran into a tweet from very popular Bengals fan, Bengals super fan. I, I've seen him on Twitter a lot, uh, interacting with different Bengals fans and whatnot. Uh, Bengals captain. Um, he said this yesterday. And I was like, whoa, I so I was like, hold on, I didn't see anything like that, but let's, let's just read it first. He said, bit of info. Uh, everyone on the sideline and in the organization understands what Baltimore was doing today. The league is going to hear about it. The officials in this game are going to be graded negatively. There will most likely be a letter sent to Paycor acknowledging the mistakes. Um, so basically, it sounds like he's saying the, the officials are going to admit to their mistakes, that they're going to be apologizing to Paycor Stadium, to the Bengals and whatnot over things that they did incorrectly, according to that first tweet. Then he followed it up. He said, these conversations will be a focal point for the next game since he isn't playing around with player safety. So I start looking around, doing a little bit of investigating, and it didn't take long to figure out that there were people that felt like the Ravens were playing dirty yesterday that the Ravens were taking cheap shots, that the Ravens were going for knees, that the Ravens were just doing a lot of unnecessary stuff. Now, if y'all know me, um, I don't care, Ravens fan or not, if I see something, I'm going to say something. Like, if I see, like, if, if like for an example, if there's a penalty, if, if we're watching a game and there's a penalty that gets called and it's, and it's beneficial for the Ravens, but it's really, it shouldn't have been called, I will gladly say, hey, no, nah, Ravens ain't deserved that one. We'll take it, of course, but Ravens ain't deserved that one. Uh, yeah, y'all already know how it goes on here. Um, but yesterday in the game, I ain't see anything crazy. I know there was some Bengals fans that were upset on the uh, the whirly hit on T. Higgins that kind of knocked the wind out of him for like I think he came off of like maybe a play, maybe two. I think it was just only a play, but that certainly wasn't a dirty hit at all. Like not at all. It wasn't a late hit. It wasn't a dirty hit. T. Higgins was going for the catch. Whirly laid the wood on him. He hit him. He dropped that shoulder and hit, he hit him right in the stomach. And, I mean, you get hit right in the stomach, you don't see it coming. Yeah, it's going to knock the wind out of you for sure. But it, it wasn't a dirty hit at all. Then I, I've seen a lot of uproar um, from some people about the, the Roquan Smith after Jamal Chase uh, scored a touchdown on Daryl Worley. I guess Worley was like the center of it all yesterday. Um, but after Jamal Chase scored the touchdown on Daryl Worley, um, uh, Roquan Smith, J Jamal Chase was getting up. Uh, Worley was getting up, and I think it was Marcus Williams over there, too, like helping Worley up or something. Then Roquan Smith came running over there, and he gave Jamar Chase like a little bump. And Jamar Chase kind of like backed up a little bit. I didn't think it was anything crazy. Like, for that one, I, I could get some people could start to say something a, a tiny bit, but that, 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 that really wasn't anything. That, that, that was like really a bunch of nothing. So I, I know um, for, for Bengals captain, I know he was at the actual game yesterday. So if there's something that I didn't see, for, for anybody, if, if y'all were even watching it on the broadcast or anybody was at the game and y'all saw something that was dirty, please let me know because I, I, I didn't see anything while watching the game. I didn't, the, 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 and then even um, there was a – I don't know if it was <laughs> – Oh, it was so sad, man. I don't know if it was a Dafe away or Tyus Bowser. Remember when the it was I forgot what play it was. Oh yeah, it was the fourth down where Bengals went for it on fourth down. And Joe Burrow dropped back. I think they did a play action or something. They were trying to set up like a screen or a pass to the flats. Uh Joe Burrow dropped back, faked the handoff, and then he had pressure in his face right away. And then he threw the ball to the ground. He's like, Oh nope, I ain't doing it. Nope, not going for it. Uh-uh. We're done. 
Um, but the Bengals offensive lineman literally pushed the Ravens defensive lineman, the outside line. Like I said, I don't know if it was a Dafe away or Tyus Bowser, but that Bengals offensive lineman, he pushed him from Cincinnati to Cleveland. He pushed him all the way through the sideline, through the stadium. He pushed him like 50 yards out of, out of the game. I was like, oh, man. But I, I didn't think it was dirty. I just thought they, they were just getting into it. Maybe they were having a, a little back and forth way of words or something like that. I don't know. But I, I didn't think. I thought it was more funny than anything. Because we know it's, it's the heat of the moment. This is a division game. Um, so these two teams are used to playing each other. It's a lot of back and forth. It's going to be a lot of trash talks. So stuff like that is going to happen. So I didn't really think too much of it. Like I said, we, you can go back and watch a live stream. We were laughing at that part. And then I thought that it was actually kind of sad, too, because I, I felt for the, the Ravens. Play. I'm like, man, who is that that got pushed all the way back? But like I said, we weren't at the actual game, so we couldn't see everything. So if there's more to the story, hey, please let me know because I'm, I'm very unaware of it. Um, but DJ Rita, he said he was aware of it as well. And this is what he had to say. He said there was some stuff I don't agree with. Uh, and then uh, Bengals cornerback Cam Taylor Britt said there was a lot of cheap stuff going on. Uh, just know that we owe them, even though we won this game, we owe them. Uh, and then um, Taylor Britt also said it was a lot of late stuff just after the play, doing dirty stuff you shouldn't do in football, aiming at guys' legs and stuff and other dirty hits. We don't play like that. We're going to remember that. So I'm like, okay, like, again, I maybe um we'll we'll get some more information on something this week maybe but like i said i i personally didn't see anything we watched that whole game from start to finish um and i, I would think that if there was like really a lot of dirty hits and late hits going on that there would have been more of a like a scruff more of a, like back and forth between the Bengals and ravens players and whatnot but i just i didn't see it i didn't see it so I don't know if the, the, the Bengals players and focus and the Bengals fa players and fans focus is just on the Roquan Smith thing, the Jamar Chase or the Darryl Worley hit to um to T. Higgins. Oh, there now I will give the Bengals this. There was um was it on the fumble play with Joe Burrow fumble? No, I don't think it was on the fumble play. But there was one play where there was a missed face mask call on Joe Burrow. <laughs> that boy his face mask was turned. All the way around. It looked, it looked like he was looking behind him because that's how bad his face mask was turned around. But other than that, like, they were playing ball to me. That's all it looked like to me. So I don't know. But I guess uh, we'll find out if anything ends up coming to this uh, in the very near future. But, again, from what I saw, it ain't look like anything crazy. Just your typical. I, and I know, I know a lot of people have been calling, hey, it's AFC North. That's just AFC North game. I didn't even think of that. Just a regular football game. Just a football game. That's all I saw. But again, like I said, I wasn't there. So maybe there's some stuff that we didn't see from the broadcast view that people that were actually there, they did see. So, I mean, I guess we'll see. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to let y'all know what's going on around uh, the AFC North uh, with the two AFC North teams that made the playoffs. And they will be playing each other uh, in a few days. And, and this will be their final showdown uh, of this football season and they can settle the score uh once and for all this year ravens got one Bengals got one now it's time for the tiebreaker and i mean obviously Bengals or ravens they don't need any extra motivation going into this game uh they don't need any extra bulletin board material going into this game because it's a playoff game like that that's enough bulletin board material right there all you got to do is write on a bulletin board you either win or you start your vacation early. That's it. <laughs> there will be some players that are like, hey, well, give me that vacation early. But, again, you, you got all the motivation in the world that you already need. Because this is it. This is an opportunity. This, this game starts your opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. Bengals, of course, they, uh, they went there last year. And despite what a lot of people were saying, and despite how their season started early this year, despite going into the season with a lot of people say, oh, Bengals going to have a Super Bowl hangover. The teams that lose in the Super Bowl, they always have bad seasons. The following year, they have a hangover, and it just they don't get it done. The Bengals, hey, they they they've been hot. They've been hot, so they got all the motivation in the world to be like, hey, let's let's make this happen. And then Ravens, Ravens got all the motivation in the world too, because <laughs> this could be Lamar's last ride with the team. But we we we'll talk about that later on. Uh, I mean, we don't even know if he's gonna play or not yet. So we'll see, man. 
we'll see. But anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And again, like I said, if if there was anything that y'all saw that I missed that we didn't talk about, please, hey, let me know. Let me know. Put in the comment section or whatnot. Show it to me in a video on Twitter or somewhere, Instagram, whatever. Show it to me. I got, I want to see it so I can see what the, the, all this discourse uh, is about. But anyway, love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And we out. <laughs>